In the church's calendar, today, the 22nd of July, is the feast of St. Mary Magdalene, one of Jesus' most loyal followers. Mary Magdalene not only travelled with Jesus, accompanying him during his earthly ministry, but also she witnessed the crucifixion and the resurrection. Displayed in the chapel of St. Mary Magdalene in the cathedral here in Chichester is Graham Sutherland's famous painting, depicting the moment described in St. John's Gospel when standing outside the tomb, Mary mistakes Jesus for the gardener before eventually realizing who he is. And he responds with the words, do not touch me. I've always found it interesting that Graham Sutherland painted such bright colors in this painting, not only because he lived and worked in the south of France, where the light was naturally bright, but also because it had to be seen from the baptistry right down at the west end of the cathedral. In the baptistry, of course, hangs Hans Feibusch's a painting of the baptism of Jesus. So to me, moving from one end of the cathedral, from the baptistry up to the St. Mary Magdalene Chapel at the east end, helps me to reflect on the journey that Jesus took from the outset of his ministry to its climax and the resurrection. And walking from one end of the cathedral to the other in that way, one also passes, of course, the Chichester panels depicting the raising of Lazarus, as if to remind us of what Jesus achieved during that journey of his ministry. The journey, as I say, on which Mary Magdalene was one of his most loyal companions. There are two aspects of Mary Magdalene's commitment to Jesus that can help us on our own journey of faith. The first is what I see as her gratitude. There's a certain amount of pure legend, of course, surrounding Mary Magdalene. But we know from Luke's Gospel, chapter 8, that she was one of the women who had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities. In modern parlance, I would suggest that that means Mary had endured some genuine psychological trauma from which Jesus healed her. And that her devotion to him and her gratitude to him was as a result of that healing. It is sometimes easy to forget to show gratitude, not least in our prayer life and through expressions of generosity, kindness and forgiveness towards other people. I believe that all prayer should be begin with gratitude, thanksgiving to God for what he has done for us before we move on to pray for other things. The second point here lies in Jesus' words, do not touch me, which more accurately means do not cling to me, from which Sutherland's painting, of course, gets its name, Noli Me Tangere. Mary has to learn that the days of clinging are over. She cannot recreate the past through physical contact with the Lord. Things have moved on and real faith and real love often means letting go and moving on. That's what we need to learn over and over again as Christians. Just as parents have to let go of their children when they become adults and let them fly free, having nurtured them and sometimes indeed clung to them during childhood, the real test of their love for them is if they're prepared to let them go when they grow up. Letting go doesn't mean abandonment. Mary Magdalene had to let go of Jesus, but in his risen life he would be with her always, as he is for us, and as good parents always are when their child has grown into adulthood and indeed may need help or guidance. Not letting go of a child and clinging on to them when they grow up can cause psychological damage. Not letting go in faith can stunt our spiritual growth. It's not always easy, but to let go is most certainly liberating and can open up new vistas and even adventures in faith. So Mary Magdalene then was a beloved disciple of Jesus, 
who knew her need of Jesus and his healing. May we all increasingly come to know that need of him and become increasingly grateful to him. <laughs>